All right, welcome to the DSN podcast, your place for everything happening at Desmet Jesuit High School. I'm your producer and host, Kyle Grandquist. Uh, with me, I have Nick Abel. And then uh, if you guys just want to go around in a circle and uh, say your names. Yeah, my name's uh, Marty Rogers. I'm a retention and retriculation um, counselor here. Thanks for having me. Hey, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, Tim Canavan, I teach math and coach baseball. Good morning. Uh, this is Bevan Freeman, the ASC this year, teaching world studies. Awesome. Uh, a little bit of, diff of a different group um, today. Usually we have a st some students on, but today we have all the uh, first-year teachers at DeSmet. Um, so, Coach Rogers, uh, you come from football. Uh, that's what brought you here. Um, talk about that, you know, where you started coaching um, and how that's going so far right now. Yeah, so uh, just first season coming down to the high school level as far as coaching-wise, um, really enjoying it. But um, last 10 years, I was a college uh, football coach. Um, coming the last five years, coming from Southern Illinois University. Um, that's where I kind of started out as a volunteer coach. Also played there, graduated from there as well, too. Um, prior to being at Southern Illinois University, I was at University of North Dakota for three seasons, and then one season at Minot State University, which is in Minot, North Dakota. Um, prior going up to the Dakotas, I uh, attended college at Southern Illinois, graduated, um, stayed in town, and continued to coach and volunteer there as well, too. So, And then um, last summer was uh, offered an opportunity to come down here and um, get into the high school mix. Yeah. Uh, la last episode, we talked about Coach Williams yeah. um, coaching at the college level and then now at the high school level. And he talked about being a step further down in the process. So you, did a, you dealt a lot with recruiting for college, right? Yeah. Um, how is that different when you're working day in and day out with the high schoolers instead of calling them from a college? Uh, yeah, it's just, um, I think it, it, it's kind of helpful, honestly, just kind of being able to provide the, the knowledge to, to my student athletes about just the criteria that colleges are looking for. And, um, you know, as far as admissions, being able to get into college, just, just what's that whole process look like and how you go about it. Um, so me and being able to work with the kids and kind of just talk to them about that stuff and just and their families, I think, is, has been a positive for us here at the Smith since I've been here. So, Absolutely. Yeah. It also helps, you know, with your experience for those guys. Yeah, um, yeah. So. Coach Canavan, you also have coaching experience. Uh, if you want to go into that a little bit. Sure. Um, I'm kind of like that Johnny Cash song, I've Been Everywhere. Um, <laughs> so I started teaching at Francis Hall North about 16 years ago. And then I went and uh, worked at Lindenwood for four years. Um, Moved to a baseball academy for several years. Uh, coached at MICDS for a couple of years. Back to Lindenwood for a year. And then when I saw this position uh, open up, I uh, jumped at the opportunity. Yeah, definitely a uh, unique opportunity here. Um, it, have you felt the same way going from the college game to high school with co as Coach Rogers? Uh, I do enjoy helping the kids move on to the next level. Um, baseball is a little bit different than football. There aren't as many scholarships offered. It's a little bit harder to, um, uh, to find those right fits and those right opportunities. So um, talking to the kids, uh, just counseling them on, on what they should be looking for and what they should be doing is enjoyable. And, and when it pays off, it's, it's uh, very uh, feels good. Um, as for you, you said you taught math. Uh, have you always done that, or is that something that you just started this year? I taught math for uh, five years at MICDS as okay. well. Mm -hmm. What did you teach at Howell North? Uh, business. Business. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Okay. Ms. Freeman, um, a little bit different background so far. You're fresh out of college, uh, part of the Alumni Service Corps, donating a year of service to um, a Jesuit school and teaching them. Um, what's that been like? And... Yeah, yeah, just what, what's that been like? Sure. Well, um, for anyone that doesn't know, I just graduated from Xavier University, a Jesuit university. Um, so I'm happy to continue the Ignatian education here at DeSmet Jesuit. And yeah, it has really flown by. Um, everybody says that, you know, it's going to fly by, and it sure has. It's been wonderful. I've 
loved teaching history and it's just been a pleasure to get to know the students here and I'll be sad to go um, in May. Do you know what you're going to do after May? No, not no, yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks um, for asking. Mm -hmm. I'd like to teach um, next year. Okay, cool. Um, as far as if you can think back to your high school experience, do you find that DeSmet is very similar to high schools or completely different? Mm, that's a good question. Well, I mean, there is one major difference. Uh, I went to an all-girls school, and DeSmet is an all-boys school. But um, I do think that that um, format for a school is unique and special. Uh, obviously, just you get a different um, kind of experience with the different um, boys versus girls, but it's been similar in the mission. Um, I went to a mercy school, so a Catholic school where, you know, compassion and justice, uh, service, similar values to the Jesuits, so it's been nice to kind of tap into that um and I, I as a senior in my high school i went on the kairos retreat and um this past spring or just a few weeks ago i was able to be an adult on the kairos retreat here so that was a really cool way for me to reflect on where have i grown and how can i be a role model for the guys here what made you choose a jesuit university and then join the ASC alumni service corps? Well, there are no uh, Jesuit schools for girls um, where I grew up in New Jersey, but if there had been one, I probably would have gone to that because my two older brothers went to St. Peter's Prep, which is a Jesuit high school, so my family was all about the Jesuits there. Um, they both went on to Jesuit universities as well. And then when it was time for me to look for a place to go, I thought, I really like the Jesuits. So I think I applied to 12 schools, and a lot of those were Jesuit universities around the country. Yeah. Oh, we see a lot of dismet guys finding the Jesuit colleges as well here. Uh, all right, let's get into... Um, your first year here at DeSmet. Uh, so I've got a few questions pulled up. Um, so if you guys just want to talk about the top moment in your first year here so far. That might be a little tricky, but I'll give you some time. Yeah, I guess I'd just say the, uh, the top moment for me was really just, um, you know, the fall, I, w I would say. It's fall semester, just, just coming in and, and meeting all the new faculty and uh, – kind of uh, the, the students, um, getting to know my football guys, kind of, you know, you got a roster of, you know, about 80 strong and just trying to remember everybody's name and, and get to know them and little things about them and um, just figuring out what, what the school's about, you know what I mean? You kind of know what the mission is and then you, you get into the, uh, to the program and, and, and you kind of see how the mission takes its turn working on all the kids throughout mm -hmm. the school and things. Um, so just being able to meet everybody, kind of seeing what everything's about, um, being accepted was, was really a high for me coming in this, two, uh, this year. Just kind of being in college the last 10 years, um, knowing it's going to be a little bit of different just from the uh, personnel you're, wor you're working with um, on a daily basis. And um, no, those, those are real highs for me, just, uh, you know, meeting all the kids in the morning time, walking through the hallway, hearing, what's up, coach, good morning, all that other stuff. Um, just all the conversations at the coffee, coffee room in the mornings, mm -hmm. afternoons. Um, just, no, nah, it's been, been a high for me this yeah. year. And you were, you were tasked with a hard you know, and difficult thing, and you were kind of thrown right into football season. You know, it's your first year teaching, and right when school starts, your first couple of days, you all already have practice as well. So was that... Did that add to the difficulty, um, or you know, was that just kind of? Uh, no, I'd say like the football part's easy. Uh, yeah. I've been doing that for a while, so pretty pretty comfortable and familiar with uh, how that works and what that what that takes. 
Um, like I said, just kind of getting to know everybody, getting um, comfortable with my teaching role, mm. um, learning names, um, where to park, where to, you know, <laughs> just, just, just little things was kind of the challenge for me. Yeah. You know, the football part, uh, I feel like that's natural, that's the easy part. But uh, getting to know people, just understanding how everything works, just with, with football going on. You know what I mean? I think I got here late, um, kind of later in August. So, and it was just kind of got thrown into the fire. So, yeah. here we go. Yeah. But, no, it's, uh, it's been enjoyable. Nice. Coach Canavan? I think the thing that stood out for me so far this year is uh, Mission Week. Yeah. When, this, when the schedule was sent out uh, in, the, in the weeks leading up to it, I thought, oh, boy, this is going to completely disrupt my routine. My classes are going to be crazy. But I just remember looking back and thinking, wow, this is a lot of fun. Um, especially the way it culminated with that uh, assembly on the on, mm -hmm. on Friday afternoon, with the wild and out, and the uh, rock paper scissors, uh, the basketball. I, I just to me that encompassed everything that this met was about was the the brotherhood, this uh, the school spirit, but also um, keeping in mind why we're here and that's the mission is to uh, to serve others. So that was it was it was a fun week. Yeah, definitely a highlight for the Dismet year. Um, what are your thoughts on shinny hockey? Had, have you ever seen the sport before, or have you seen it to that degree? I, so my assignment during the week was to be out on the football field for the, the bubble soccer. Oh, yeah. So I didn't get to see much of it. Oh. However, I did see many people walking through the halls that week complaining about their shins. Yeah. And I, I said, what's going on? And they said, well, this is, uh, these are our hockey wounds, I think. Then, yeah. then it all made sense. I think, uh, I think by the championship, Kids were duct taping their knees <laughs> to uh, to keep the the skin. It's the price of glory. It's Nick Abel, glory. you uh, you're shaking your head. Yeah, I, I survived, but probably barely. <laughs> that last game was awful. <laughs> Miss Freeman, what was your favorite moment? Um, I think that there have just been so many little moments that don't seem big when they happen, but then I reflect back and I think. These are the things that really made this year so special. Um, whether it be helping a struggling student after school and then seeing their face light up when they, you know, finally figure it out or, you know. Um, yoga club has been pretty cool. I think, Nick, you have come, so that's been nice. Yep. Um, just saying yes to things, going to... The football game, selling tickets in the rain, or, you know, all of those just ways that I can get to know the community. The auction was pretty cool. I was able to be right in the center of all of it, writing down the, um, you know, results of the auction. That was neat. Um, yeah, and just really the inside the class the classroom experience has just been so special and i have a great group of sophomores who have just supported me in this new role and i think it's just cool to see them looking up to me and i you know it's just been really great yeah i think nick and i have talked about it before but those little interactions between uh, a teacher and a student or uh, Coach Rogers, you talked about this guy saying hi to you in the hallway. It's just those little interactions on the daily that, you know, you don't really think about, but that really is what I remember from my four years here, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, this one might be a little more reflective. Um, one experience you've learned from this year and what you've learned from it. I would say for me, um, again, coming from college where you're just dealing with a, a different group of kids age-wise is, you know, I just got to, you know, remind myself that, um, you know, they, they still are kids, you know what I mean? And um, just thinking about what, what kids need um, every day to, to have positive days um, and just trying to find different ways, positive ways to, to impact kids whether it's, you know, whatever way it takes, you know what I mean? And um, that's what I would say probably the most is just um, just that. Yeah. Maybe you can speak to this too, Coach Canavan, but I feel like in college maybe guys are maybe a little more independent. You think that's safe to say? You know, I, I think in high school 
you know, they're learning that independence. And so maybe they, they might need a coach around more. In college, do you kind of, you know, is that a little more free reign? Yeah, I'd say they're, they're kind of a little more ready-made mm-hmm. um, as far as just knowing the expectations. And, you know, from freshman year to sen- senior year, there's a lot of growth there. And um, in college, you know, I'd get them at the top of their growth when they're getting out of college, you know, start, you know, or getting out of high school going into college to, you know, dealing with freshmen and sophomores and, and juniors and, you know, things like that. It's like I got to remind myself that they they still need a lot of work and, um, you know, whatever that could be or may be. Um, so just whatever I could can do to, um, you know, try to factor that in and influence that in a positive way. Coach Hanneman? I Coach Rogers said it great, uh, best way possible. We just have to keep in mind um, that we're dealing with younger, uh, younger men now, and they're still works in progress, and we have to be patient and, and see what they need and, and help them uh, grow into manhood. Um, specifically with, with baseball or with athletics, um, I think their their motivation and their goals are a little bit different between high school and college. You know, in college, you're very uh, motivated. You you want to be the very best. And sometimes in high school, it's just a young man that wants to be part of something, wants to have fun, uh, wants to be as good as he can be, um, and uh, learning to uh, balance all that and make sure that each young man has a has a good experience has has been important to me. Yeah, uh, that's something I've worried about, especially going into college. Is you know, being a senior here now and then you go back to a freshman and you're kind of the, the you know small fish in a big pond again um, but I think from where I started as a freshman here to where I finished as a senior uh, has been monumental growth uh, so I'm excited for that. Miss Freeman? Um, yes so I think that the thing I've learned the most is that as much as you want something to go a certain way and you plan and you plan, um, God might have another vision and it's okay to just trust the process. And as you both have said, they're just kids and it's okay if, you know, if they don't get something right away or if they mess up and they mess up again and then they mess up another time. It's all, it's all okay. They just need to be loved and to, you know, um, have that adult following through with them and yeah I just learned that it's there's f- ebbs and flows in this whole thing so some days and weeks are going to be going really well and other days and weeks not so much and it's okay just you got to ride it out and yeah by the time you're a senior hopefully there will be um, some of that growth and I think we really see that here at DeSmet. Absolutely. Uh, and then one last quick question. Um, so you guys are both returning. We know that. Uh, Ms. Freeman, you are teaching somewhere, but you want to teach. Yeah. Um, one, what's one thing that you want to improve on next year, whether it be coaching or teaching? Um, for me, it's just um, to continue to develop into the uh, you know, best teacher I can be. Um, not not so much a coach, um, you know. It, when it's time to coach, coach. But when it's time to teach, you know, being a teacher and just being receptive and understanding um, f- for the kids' needs. Yeah. You know, and then <coughs> excuse me. But however, I can. Um, well, you know, whatever I'm teaching, just just best get that out to the kids, yeah, and, and make sure they're understanding that, and um, you know, we're having success uh, working at whatever we're working at. Yeah, you touched on that. Football's easy at that, you know, at this point. Yeah. Um, and teaching can be similar, but in so many ways, it's so different. Yeah, and um, just coaching wise, just just continue to develop relationships yeah. and dive into the kids and their families more and more. Yeah. To get to know them more. Coach Canavan. I agree with Coach Rogers again. Um, there's always things that you can improve upon in the classroom. Um, you want to try new things, see how the students react. If it helps them learn better. Um, so just growing my bag of tricks and um, hoping that someday the classroom is, runs as smoothly as uh, the practice field. <laughs> We've seen that in uh, 
since sophomore, my sophomore year, so two years ago, since quarantine, just an absolute shift of how classes are being taught um, through technology. Is that something that you've kind of had to learn? Uh, maybe in, co- I mean, maybe at MICDS you weren't as you know, you know, having meetings on Zoom or Microsoft Teams that we use. Uh, you, yeah, you definitely have to adapt. Absolutely, um, started with with Zoom and, and Teams, and then. Um, you know, putting quizzes online or working with OneNote. Um, and I think all these um, technology tricks that we have, um, I think they better engage students. So the more that you can incorporate them into the, into the classroom, um, I think the more you, that you get the students' attention and, and focus. Yeah, absolutely. Ms. Freeman. Yes, well, I'm just starting out, so I think I have so much to learn, and there's a lot of room for me to grow. Specifically, just figuring out where is that line between challenging my students, setting high expectations, but then also, um, you know, making sure no one falls through the cracks. And um, how do you come up with the lesson that is the right um, fit for everyone in the class when, you know, there's a range of ability or success however we want to word that so that has definitely been um, something that I didn't expect to um, figure out but um, hopefully as I grow into this career I can kind of um, figure out how to meet those kids where they're at or maybe you know make variety of lessons or quizzes or whatever it may be. Just really um, thinking about students as individuals and caring for them and not just seeing them as one big class is where I'd like to uh, focus. Yeah. Um, Is the high school level where you want to teach at? Um, That's an interesting question. I definitely wouldn't want to go any younger. Hmm. Um, I think... I personally would like to continue my education, get a master's in history, maybe down the line be a professor, but I really like the high school age, and um, yeah, I really don't know what will happen, but I don't think I need to know yet. I only asked that because you talked about, you know, personalizing your lessons. Yeah. And I feel like the younger you get, the more you'd have to do that, per se. Mm. Um, in college, you might have found that maybe your professors, some of your professors didn't know you. Going to Xavier, you know, I'm sure you had some big classes. Um, so I was just curious if you wanted to stay at the high school level where you can kind of, uh, you want to more personally, you know, address mm-hmm. your quizzes and lessons. Right. I think so. I think you're right about um, high school is being a bit more flexible. By the time you're in college, you know, you're supposed to meet a certain expectation. But actually at Xavier, um, just in case you were wondering, the class sizes were pretty small. And I was able to really get to know my professors well. And they will meet you where they're at. Where, sorry, they will meet you where you're at, which I think just goes to show how great the Jesuits are. Um, with their, you know, approach to education, um, you know, office hours, they're willing to meet you if you're struggling, like, you know, you won't get um, lost, hopefully, as long as you make that effort. Um, yeah, but maybe at a larger university, you're right, you might be in a huge lecture hall where the professor doesn't know your name, but at typical Jesuit universities, you should, you should be cared for. Yeah. Maybe it's more that self-application that I was yes. thinking of. Yes. Um, not many people will track you down about missing assignments or, you know, a quiz that you missed or something like yeah. that. So. Well, actually, sorry, I don't no, do you mean good. to interrupt, but no, that's something as a mentor teacher, um, Coach Marty, you might agree, but we really try to get these guys to self-advocate for themselves. And that's a skill that hopefully by the time you're going into college, you you have figured out. And I think it's our job as teachers to kind of gently push you in that direction. Yeah. Great. Good. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. Uh, thank you guys for listening. And we will see you next week.